shall bow to me! Very well. Come then. Show us the strength of your will. Few franchises have the honor of boasting an active 35-year legacy, but that's exactly what Final Fantasy will be celebrating with the upcoming release of Final Fantasy XVI. By the time it's released in 2023, Final Fantasy XVI will be the first mainline Final Fantasy game to come out in seven years. Both longtime fans and curious new onlookers are keen to see what Square Enix will deliver in this new era. So here's everything we know so far about Final Fantasy XVI. Final Fantasy XVI was revealed during Sony's PlayStation 5 showcase on September 16th, 2020. And while that reveal was not accompanied by any sort of release date, the PlayStation's June 2022 State of Play showcase confirmed a summer 2023 release window. Producer Naoki Yoshida stated in a message tweeted on December 27th, 2021, that the COVID-19 pandemic delayed development by almost half a year. Final Fantasy 16 is currently slated to be a PlayStation 5 exclusive. Yoshida says developing it for the PlayStation 5 has allowed the team to craft a game in which you'll jump straight from story cutscenes into real-time battles and back again without any loading times, making the gameplay flow at a breakneck pace. Final Fantasy XVI's reveal trailer ended with a card stating its platform exclusivity. Curiously, there was also some fine print at the bottom saying also available on PC. This was later removed. A PC version of Final Fantasy XVI seems certain, but it will surely come after some time has passed since the PlayStation 5 release. If it follows the Final Fantasy VII Remake timeline, we can expect to see Final Fantasy XVI on PC around a year and a half after its release on PS5. Darkness spreads as day gives way to twilight. The Mother's Flame now all but a flicker. Final Fantasy XVI takes place in Valistia, a land blessed by the light of the Mother Crystals. These are glittering mountains of crystal that tower over the realms around them, blessing them with Aether. Aether allows people to live comfortably, a gift promising enough to motivate different realms to engage in war with each other. Now, the destructive threat of the Blight and the fading of the Mother Crystal's Aether has thwarted the uneasy peace that has presided over the various realms. The most powerful and deadly creatures to exist in Valistia are the Icons. Think of them as being akin to weapons of mass destruction in the real world. Each Icon resides within a Dominant, an individual who can summon their Icon and use its power. Some realms treat icons as royalty to admire, others force them to be weapons of war. All recognize dominance as crucial to the political landscape of Valistia. By sending their icons to the field of war, the rivaling realms hope to seize each other's crystals for their own gains. There are six realms in total, the Grand Duchy of Rosaria, the Holy Empire of Sandbreak, the Kingdom of Walu, the Dalmechian Republic, the Iron Kingdom, and the Crystalline Dominion. The answer as to why Final Fantasy XVI will have a classic medieval European fantasy setting is simple. Many of the core members of the Creative Business Unit 3, the division developing the game, enjoy the setting and the feel it gives. The last mainline Final Fantasy took place in a world mixing advanced modern technology and magic. So, Final Fantasy XVI having the kind of setting seen in entries like Final Fantasy IX and Final Fantasy XII will be a welcome return to form for many fans. Despite the vastness of Valistia, Final Fantasy XVI will not be an open world game. It will take the inspiration from recent AAA open world RPGs to garner the interest of old and new Final Fantasy fans alike, but the team has avoided a design that limits them to a single open world space. Yoshida says that in this way, the team can bring a story that feels like it spans an entire globe and beyond, while focusing on an independent area-based game design that can give players a better feel of a truly global scale. In an interview with Famitsu in 2022, he expressed his firm belief that delivering what we believe is the best story in an experience that blends together games and movies does not require an open world. 
How do we even know the girl will be among us? Our kind do not question orders, we follow them. The main story of Final Fantasy 16 will follow the life of Clive Rosfield through his teens, 20s, and 30s. It will also largely focus on the Dominants and their icons. Doing so makes the Dominants great avenues for exploring the more mature themes the team wants to depict, and the icons grandiose enough to offer the entirely unique experiences you'll have while controlling them in icon fights. One of the more mature themes the team is exploring with Final Fantasy XVI's story is the inevitable clash of values and ideals when different people with differing viewpoints are in the same room. What emerges from their discussions as truly right or wrong? The dominant storyline will explore deeper and darker themes regarding how people should live if, for example, people should live the life chosen for them or carve their own destiny. Final Fantasy XVI will contain a few side quests that will develop the world of Valistia in addition to the main scenario, as well as some in-game compendiums and materials to read for deeper lore. However, it will be a self-contained story. As of right now, there are no plans to create tertiary content that will be required to enjoy or understand it. In Final Fantasy XVI, you'll play as Clive Rosfield, the firstborn son of the Archduke of Rosaria. While he was meant to inherit Phoenix and become its dominant, fate instead gave his power to Clive's younger brother, Joshua. To try and forge his own path, Clive dedicated himself to mastering the blade. He eventually attained the honor of becoming the first shield of Rosaria, the protector of Phoenix who can wield a part of the icon's fire. Unfortunately, Clive's career ends in tragedy at the hands of the mysterious dark icon known as Ifrit, setting him on a journey of vengeance. Joshua Rosfield is the second son of Archduke of Rosaria and the dominant of Phoenix, and is younger than Clive by five years. He greatly admires his older brother, whom he sees as braver and stronger, and feels guilty for inheriting Phoenix's power. But it's Joshua's strength, both emotional and physical, that will be deeply tested following the tragic events that changed the brothers' lives forever. Jill Warwick was taken from her homeland in the fallen Northern Territories to become a ward of Rosaria, securing peace between the two warring realms. After being raised alongside the Archduke's sons, she is seen as part of the Rosfield household as much as them. She is a treasured confidant of the brothers and is described as kind, gracious, and unassuming. Other characters taking the stage are Hugo Kupka, dominant of Titan, Benedicta Harmon, dominant of Garuda, Dion Lesage, dominant of Bahamut, and Barnabas Thatmere, dominant of Odin. Last but certainly not least is Torgal, the adorable wolf pup you see in the reveal trailer. As for whether Torgal will eventually play a role in combat, Yoshida says, you'll have to wait and see. By combining fast-paced, real-time action with a classic fantasy world setting, the development team hopes to capture as many people as possible with Final Fantasy XVI's combat. Yoshida has told IGN that translating traditional summon abilities into player actions and allowing for the real-time swapping and chaining of these abilities in battle has allowed us to create a system that not only looks great, but feels really good to play. It's important to note that you will only play as Clive in Final Fantasy XVI, a significant change from the majority of the series' past games. Clive will be accompanied by one or more companions for most of the journey, and they will both participate in battle and banter with Clive. However, they will be AI controlled. That's not to assume you'll quickly grow bored of playing as just Clive, though. He's armed with a full arsenal of powerful attacks and abilities based on traditional Final Fantasy summons, as well as the ability to cycle between those attacks and deal them in real time. Icon battles will also be different from each other. In one icon versus icon battle, it may be reminiscent of a 3D shooter. 
Another will look more like a pro wrestling match. A third will transform an entire arena into a battlefield for these icons to duel it out. Each fight will be unique since the team did not reuse these systems. Even the UI will be slightly different between each one. As a result, every icon versus icon confrontation should feel special and dynamic. Many perceive Final Fantasy to have stagnated as a series in the last few years, Yoshida among them. In an interview with Inverse earlier this year, Yoshida said that he believes the series is currently struggling to successfully adapt to and set industry trends. Final Fantasy hasn't had the best last decade. The release of the last mainline entry, Final Fantasy XV, was met with mixed responses and they were all the more egregious in the wake of its publicly troubled 10-year development cycle. Final Fantasy XIV has achieved arguably one of the best redemption stories in the industry, but it began as one of Square Enix's biggest failures and has taken years of support and massive content additions to reach its current revered status. Final Fantasy XIII was generally received positively, but its flaws were heavily panned, and its multiple sequels didn't inspire overly enthusiastic responses. The last universally critically acclaimed Final Fantasy from the get-go was Final Fantasy XII, which came out over 15 years ago. While Final Fantasy XIV is thriving and still setting records, the single-player Final Fantasy games need to spark much more excitement than they have in the recent years. Final Fantasy XVI seems poised to try to represent a reassurance of the series' future. With aspirations to be a mature evolution for the series, an eagerness to try new things that have never been seen in the franchise before, and project leaders with impressive track records, Final Fantasy XVI might just achieve that goal. Only time will tell if the light of the crystals will result in a brighter future for Final Fantasy. For more on Final Fantasy, you should check out our extensive look back on the history of the series' summons. And for everything else video games, Stick with IGN.